Hi, just a quick tutorial video on the difference between mean, median, and average. Because if you don't get this right, you can sound like a real dolt. Or people can take advantage of you by manipulating numbers, as Mark Twain said, lies, damn lies, and statistics, doesn't matter who it is, engineers, scientists, the media, the government, they can manipulate you by sneakily using, interchanging these terms to give you a result that they want and what may not represent the true reality or it may shift the data one way or the other depending on what they want you to think. So if you know how all this works, you can spot potential manipulation and go, uh, you said mean, give me the median value please. So we'll start out with mean. What is mean? Well, mean in general parlance is the average. The average, when people say, use the word average, they typically mean the mean. Ha, get it? They mean the mean? I'm here all week. But the mean is actually a specific type of average that's actually called the arithmetic mean. So when people say mean, they actually, that's the terminology that they actually mean. So, or if they say average, that's generally what they mean. There's just too many means. <laughs> Whoa, this is heavy. Anyway, let's go through an example here to show you because almost all of you are surely are familiar with what an average is. And an average is simply, if you've got a collection of data like this, you've got a number of values, the average or the mean or the arithmetic mean is simply all of those numbers added up and divided by the number of numbers that there are, the number of values. So that's written, the mean is, in this particular case, x1 plus x2, so x is the value, so x2 plus 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 to xn, so the nth value divided by the number of uh, values here, n, and that gives you your mean or average value. Simple. And of course, there's a ton of stuff in engineering and real life where the average or the mean value is exactly what you want. It's going to give you the result that you want. But there are many cases where that using the mean or the average value is going to give you a, a skewed result, potentially deliberately skewed result. As I said, people can manip use these terminologies to manipulate data for nefarious means uh, to try and persuade you one way or the other. Things can sound worse than they are, things can sound better than they are. They can uh, do that by simply using a different type of average. So we'll go through this example here. I'm measuring 11 different resistors, okay? They're all supposed to be the same, but there's some tolerance in there. So I'll get 98 ohms, 102, 103, 100, 103, 101, 97, 99, 101, 101, and 500 ohms. So 11 different values, you get the mean, or the average of those, it's 136.8. Hmm, can you smell what I can smell? <laughs> yeah, dodgy data. In this particular case, it's obvious that something's gone wrong in my measurement here. Could be the contact resistance or whatever it is. Doesn't matter, 500 ohms doesn't sound right when all the others are supposed to be like near enough to 100 ohms. So of course you could just throw away that data point and not include it in your data set, but sometimes you wanna leave that data there because it might be legitimate data. Let me give you another example. So let's take the classic example of home prices, for example. You're almost certainly familiar with this because you hear it all the time, every day in the legacy media. Um, let's say uh, these are house prices, 980,000, 1.02 million, 1.03 million, 1.01 million, and some richy rich down here in your suburb has just sold their McMansion for five million bucks. Well. That's kind of like an, an outlier, but it is an actual real value. So you've got to include it in your data set. So what happens if the media or the real estate agent is trying to tell you that house prices are going to the moon in your suburb? They might use a mean or an average value. They might tell you the mean or the average, which includes this real outlying data point here, which gives you a mean value or an average value of 1.36 million. And you thought your suburb was only worth you know, round about an average of like 1 million, but no, it's jumped up to 1.36 million. Unbelievable. 
So using the arithmetic mean or average uh, value actually has problems when you have data points that are like really outlier data points, but they might still be genuine or uh, your data is skewed in one direction or the other. And by skewed, I mean, here's an example, or in mathematical terms, they call it skewness. You can see that the data is sort of bunched up one end here, or in this particular case, the data is all bunched up in the other end here. And it can make a quite a substantial difference whether you use mean or median when your data is skewed one direction or the other or you've got big outlying values. So how do we get around these problems? Well, we use what's called the median. Once again, median is just another type of average and there's actually many different types of averages. Here, I'll put up a list and you might have to zoom in on this one. There's a ton of different type of averages. Mean and median are just uh, two of them. Uh, for example, RMS is actually another form of mean. It's a mean squared, hence RMS, root mean squared. So it mean squared is actually another type of average. So how does median work? Well, it's very simple. All we've got to do is take our data and just sort it. So it's a, a sorted data set now. So at 97, we get our lowest value. We'll put that up the top here, top or bottom. doesn't matter which direction you sort it, as long as it's sorted, right? So you sort it from lowest to highest like this. So 500 down the bottom. And once you've sorted your data like that, you just take the actual value, the individual value that sits in the middle. So you have an equal number of data points here, in this case five on the upper side and five on the lower side. But it doesn't matter, you could have five million data points. You pick the one that's right in the middle and bingo, that value becomes your median value. So you can see that median is actually really simple to calculate. It's even simpler than uh, the arithmetic mean because you don't have to do any division or whatever. You just pick the number, sort them, pick the number that's in the middle. No worries. So the advantage this gives is that it pushes these outlier values right out to the end because you typically ha don't have many of these outlier values and they can be massive. This, this could be, you know, a 500K or something like that and it makes no difference. Or it could be a $500 million mansion resort thing um, that if we use the mean, it would have skewed that mean or average value right to the moon. But because it's only a single value in, in a data set of 11 values, but it might be a couple of values in, you know, a data set of a thousand houses that sold or something else, then it, it really, those become completely insignificant. So what would have happened over here to the mean if we'd actually removed this data point, this extreme outlier one? Well, run the numbers, we've got 10 of them there, and you'll find that the mean, um, instead of being the median of 101, the mean is actually 100.5. So it's very close to the median. So you can see that in this particular case, just by sorting them like this and choosing the middle value, we've effectively eliminated the data without actually removing it from the data set, which you don't want it to in the case of house prices or in the case of wages, for example. The government might be telling you that uh, your average wages have uh, risen by $10,000 this year and you go, <laughs> Yeah, I don't think so. It's because they're using the average value. Let's say you worked at a company, for example, and they said, oh, the average wage at this company is $100,000 a year. But you know that oh, everyone's only earning $50,000 a year, but because the CEO is earning 50 million bucks a year, if you use the mean, that's gonna push up the average value. But if you use the median, then uh, you know the CEO and the board of directors, all their massive wages, they don't uh, really play a huge part as long as you've got a lot of other employees that are earning a similar sort of thing. So you're getting a more real world value when you use the median. That's why the median is used for house prices, it's used for wages and other things that you know really matter to people where you can get like a lot of outliers, richy riches out there in the world that can actually skew the data. And there can be a ton of other examples where outlying data or skewed data will uh, give you a substantially different different result if you use the mean versus the median. Now, in some cases, the median might be exactly the same as the mean uh, because you just that's just the way the data happens to uh, work out. But in those particular cases, you won't really have any major outliers.
So if you've got any good examples of mean versus median, leave it in the comments down below. But I'll give you another example. Here's a report, a wealth report from UBS. Every year they produce a wealth report that ranks every country in the individual person's wealth in that country. Um, and here's the list here. And you can see that number one is Switzerland, number four is the US, number five is Australia. Good, honest, you little ripper. But I know what you're thinking. You're looking at that number and going, Dave, I don't have a wealth of $560,000. What's going on here? Well, you know that they're manipulating stuff. But take a look at the top. What do you see? The word average. Aha, uh -huh. gotcha. But I haven't shown you the full table. In this particular case, UBS know that it's manipulative to actually give you that data. So they give you two sets of data. So here is the full data set. They give you a table right next to it that has the median value. And look at the difference now. Just by changing that one word, average to median, Switzerland suddenly gone from number one in the world, wealthiest nation or wealthiest individuals um, in nations to number seven. The US has gone from a respectable number four to 14th in the world now. And Australia has gone from five to number two. Little bloody beauty. So once again, going back to the house price example or the uh, wage example where a lot of richy riches or uh, you know rich mansions can skew that data, same thing can happen with this individual wealth. So what that means when Australia jumped from uh, number five up to number two, what it means is that the average Australian has a much higher real world median uh, worth than uh, someone in the US or somebody in Switzerland. Why is that the case? Well, I won't go into the whole housing bubble thing, but uh, yeah, Australians, because we don't have as many richy riches living here as they do in the US or in Switzerland, which was obviously skewing the results when we use the mean or average value. So median is the correct one to use here. Otherwise, all those richy rich Bill Gateses in the US, they're just skewing that data right to the high side. So if you're the government or you're the manipulative me legacy media, you could take either one of those values, depending on how you want to spin it, you say, oh, US is now 14th in the world in uh, wealth because you use the median value. Or you might want to spin it positive. Oh, US is so fantastic. Look at us go. You know, we're number four, fourth in the world with median wealth. What are you complaining about? So what they're doing is manipulating you to think a certain way based on how they decided to report the data. And the data is real, the data's in there, it's just how they decide to report it. And of course, uh, the UBS are good that they've put both values in there so it's easy to take out. But you could also take that out if you had access to the raw data as well. You could just spin it by that one simple word change, median versus mean, or mean versus median, or, or average, in this particular case, average, versus median can make a huge difference. And just one small point, when you are calculating the median like this, uh, we happen to have 11 values. So we just happen to have an even number e either side like this. So we can just choose the middle value. But what happens if you had an even number of values and, and your split right in the middle ended up between two values? Well, you simply take the arithmetic mean of those two values. In this case, it's, it's 101, but you know, let's say it was these ones like this, 101 and 103, then your median value would be the in arithmetic mean of those. So it would be 102.5. So whether or not you use median versus mean, it pretty much comes down to whether or not you had, as I said, skewed data or you have really big outlier values in your measurement data. If you had like lots of noise, you might have big spurious uh, spikes, you know, right out there or something like that, then you might want to use the median just to take those out of the average value. So I hope you enjoyed that video and found it useful. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. And as always, discussed down below and over on the EV blog forum. And I've got a new merch store and a new range of uh, merch. Not only t-shirts, but uh, mugs and you know, hats and all sorts of stuff uh, at uh, TeePublic. I'll link that in down below as well. Check it out. Catch you next time. <laughs>